Hey guys, yes, the video that you're watching was edited, color graded, and also exported using a 2019 iPad mini 5 with DaVinci Resolve. I know it's ridiculous, but it worked, so that's why we're gonna talk about it, and I'm gonna show you how I did it. Let's get straight to the point. Okay, before we talk about the process of importing the footage and editing and color grading in DaVinci Resolve on the iPad mini, 5 that I have, I'm going to talk about the iPad mini 5. The iPad mini 5 was from 2019 with I believe the 812 chip, it's not fast. And before I tried doing this color grading and editing using just the iPad mini, I was really skeptical. I thought that it was going to have like trouble just playing back the footage, but it ended up being like really smooth and you can actually edit multiple tracks of 4K footage using just the iPad mini 5 and DaVinci Resolve. And I have my iPad mini 5 wiped because it only has 64 gigabyte of storage. So I will highly recommend you to use an iPad that has like more storage because that's the main thing because the clip that I was recording for the intro and outro of this video already took up like one gigabyte. And on the iPad, the system and the OS is going to take up like 10, 20 gigabyte. So when we're trying to use DaVinci Resolve for the iPad, um, there are two versions, the free version and the paid version, which is a studio version. The main differences are, at least for my projects, is the noise reduction that you get for the paid version and also um, grain and some other advanced um, features. But the free version is already good enough. Uh, you cannot edit any 10-bit footage using the free version. That's why I'm using the ZV-1 footage, which is 8-bit. But if you're editing anything above 8-bit, you need to use the studio version, which is the same as the uh, DaVinci Resolve Studio for Mac. And also you need a separate license for the iPad version, which is, I don't know, they're just trying to make some money, I guess. So what I would recommend you to do is to import the footage, copy the footage from your SD card onto your iPad um, main directory. You can create a file folder inside the files app. You can also edit off of an uh, SSD drive or hard drive as long as they're fast enough. But on an de older device, I highly recommend you to uh, import the footage into your iPad first. So that's what I did here. So let's jump straight into DaVinci Resolve. So when you first open DaVinci Resolve for the first time on iPad, with the older iPad, I believe some of them will have like problem like opening the app, try uninstalling it and then like install it again. And as long as it opens up, you will be greeted with a project page, not this page. This is where like all your projects are, but you will be inside your actual workspace when you first open it. And here I will create a new project. I'm gonna call it iPad Mini DaVinci Resolve YouTube. Oops. Video. And it's really hard to type because I have a camera in front of me and then I have to type on the screen. I don't want to do a screenshot because, or screen recording because I want to show you guys where I'm tapping onto the screen. So I'm going to hit create. So I now have my new project here. This is basically DaVinci Resolve for iPad with two pages, the cut page and also the color grading page. You have the ability to trick the app to open up all the pages available, but then I believe they're still in beta. So I'm not going to show you guys that. So what you're going to do is to tap onto this gear icon. By the way, on older iPads without uh, or with processor, before the M1 chip, you will not be able to edit 4K video. So this is going to be a 1080p project, but you can also, you can still import 4K footage into the projects and you're just going to export them in 1080p, which is more than enough for most of the stuff. For Instagram, social media, even YouTube that you're watching right now, it's 1080p. I'm going to force this project into 1080p so you're not going to have to um, use a higher level or higher spec iPad. So here the timeline resolution of course is 1080p. Everything is unchanged here. Uh, unless you want to do like an Instagram uh, vertical video, you will tap onto this or check this box where it says use vertical resolution, but nothing changed here. All I changed in uh, the project setting is the uh, DaVinci Y RGB color gamut. Um, I'm going to change it to Rexel 9 Gamma 2.4. 
This is just a habit that I have. You don't have to do it. So once that project setting is set, this is where you import your media. And you're going to tap onto the media icon if you don't see it. This is where you import media. Tap onto that. and then go into the folder that contains the video. I'm gonna check that, import that. The frame rate project rate is 24 frames per second, but the ZV one is only um, 23.98 uh, frames per second, so I'm gonna change that. So now I have my media here at the corner. I'm gonna import a couple more medias from other projects just to show you guys that 4K videos are gonna work fine too. Oh, by the way, if you don't know how to import media after importing one media, you just need to tap and hold on to this. This is almost like a right click. Okay, so now I have all my media imported into this project. I'm gonna just drag one of them. By the way, if you want to drag multiple, you just need to literally just drag and highlight them. But I'm just gonna import one first. I'm gonna, nope, oops. I'm gonna drag this to the timeline. You can see that it's kind of laggy, but it's okay, it's not like unusable. And the playback or the scrubbing is really smooth. This is the intro basically that I just did. Play it. Just like that. It's really smooth already. What I'm gonna do is to select a hero frame here and I'm going to go to the, oh, by the way, I'm going to show you guys some of the features here first, uh, which is really cool because it's almost the same as the desktop version of uh, DaVinci Resolve. If you select a clip and then go to Inspector, this is where I usually will do most of the stuff. You have Transform, which is to move the, the frame side to side or like zoom in and out. You can tap onto it and minimize it. Cropping is basically creating like a crop or this is where you can create black bars um, just because it doesn't have black bars or aspect ratio option in this DaVinci Resolve, I think. If you know how to do it properly, let me know. But you can do this by tapping into the crop top and bottom and you will have the ability to add in black bars. And this is 235 to one kind of aspect ratio, which is 131.5 at the top and bottom. So this is how it will look like. I'm just gonna keep it. One really cool thing that I found is stabilization. I thought it's not gonna have stabilization, but it does. And it's actually faster than my MacBook Pro 2019 16 inch fully spec'd out. The stabilization of a clip on the iPad, the Vinci Resolve is faster and better. I don't know why but you just need to go to stabilization and stabilize it. This is warp stabilization, so don't rely on it too, too much, but it's still gonna work. This is where I will touch up on my clip. And also this is where you can add title, transitions and everything onto your clip. And this is where you can cut your clip and chop them. You can select where you want to cut and then tap onto this scissor icon and it will just cut the clip. If you want to undo it, it's at the bottom. All right, so now let's jump straight into the color page. By the way, before you do any cutting of your clip, I highly recommend you to color grade the clips first because if you cut them, you will have to color grade like separate clips, if that makes sense. If I cut this in half, you'll have to color grade this and also color grade this. So um, I would highly recommend you to color grade your main footage first and then you can do the cutting. So here, this is your color grading page, which is super sophisticated. It's almost exactly the same as the desktop version, which is kind of mind blowing. Um, here, I know that everything is so crammed, but you, what you can do is because I have clips here at the bottom, if you have multiple clips, you will see all the clips, but I usually just hide it first so I can see a better framing of the main page or the main hero frame here. And I can also drag this to minimize that. So I have my color grading node tree here. What you can do here is if you don't have a mouse or a keyboard, you can just tap onto this icon right here to add notes. So I'm just going to add a couple of them. And let's say the first one I usually would do is 
Usually it's not re noise reduction, but because this is a free version, so I'm not going to have that feature. What I'm going to do is I will do this as white balance. And this one right here, just tap and hold, note label, I'll do exposure. This one I'll do contrast. This one I'll do saturation. And I'll add more note. This is sharpening. If you need sharpening, I don't like super sharp images. Here I will create a look. I usually uh, number the, uh, the look part. This one usually I put in grain, the film grain, but because this is a free version, you don't get grain. So I'll just leave it for now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to see if I want to fix the white balance. It seems like the white balance is pretty on point. I don't think I need to do anything, but if you do, you just need to change the white balance here. Maybe a little bit warmer. Yeah. Exposure, I'm pretty sure it's pretty spot on. I have the camera set up to point out like it looks pretty good already. I'm just going to quickly see if I can do anything to the image. You can tell that by the graph, the uh, RGB parade, that the scope is pretty perfectly like exposed. So that's fine for me. Contrast, um, yeah, it's up to you to add in contrast or not add in contrast or decrease contrast. I feel like it's pretty spot on already. Saturation, same thing. I don't think I need to do too much because this is just a PP off or picture profile off on this only CV1, by the way. Saturation, maybe a little bit. Sharpening, usually I will go into this tab or this option right here. And then I'll drag this radius of the blur down to 47. Oops, totally went the wrong way. By the way, if you need to put in more precise input, you just need to tap, double tap on it. Not 47, but 0.47. So this way it's sharpened. And if you want to turn off one of the layers, you just need to tap onto the number and then tap onto it to activate it again so you can see what kind of look you're creating. And in look, I usually will go into the, um, the color wheels and I'll add in a little bit of green in the shadows and a little bit of orange until I feel like it's cool enough. So this is a pretty good look already. If I tap on to look, you can see that there's a before, this is after, before and after. Um, maybe the skin tone is a little bit green. I'm gonna do a little bit of adjustment like that. I feel like it's too saturated now, so I'm gonna do some micro adjustments just to make sure that it looks natural. We are creating a look, but we still want to make sure that it is natural. Okay, so this is before, this is after. I guess I feel like I want to add in some greens in the highlight, maybe. Yeah, something like that. By the way, you can save this look and apply it to your other footage. If you tap onto gallery at the top, here's still one, still is one. This is where you store your project power grade, which is the look, basically the note tree here. You can do that by tapping onto it to, to the image and grab still. That's where you can have your saved power grade for this project. But if you want to save a power grade for all your other projects, which is really cool, you can go to power grade one, and then this is where you can tap and hold onto the image and save it onto your global power grades. So uh, what I have here is I have a clip that is already color graded. This is when I can start like chopping the clip. And with the color graded footage, you can still see the playback. It's really, really smooth. 
I was really surprised. I thought it was going to drop frames. You can tell that by the by looking at the color grade page right here. I'm going to hide that. I'm going to go to the beginning. You can tell that this is playing at 24 frames per second, which is perfect. My Mac can't even do this, but I have a lot more layers on my Mac when I'm editing a project. So that's why, but it's really surprising. So here I can go back to my timeline, go to media, and I'm going to show you that if I drag some other clips on top of the, uh, the original, oops, the original clip that I had, you'll see what I mean by like being really surprised how smooth everything is. <laughs> I now have like three 1080 clips or four if you count this and I can play it. Everything goes really smooth, no stuttering, and I can also color grade these clips. If you don't see the clips that you want to color grade, you just tap on the clips. And then there you go. I have a power grade for these uh, clips already. I'm just going to drag it and you can see that everything is colored. And I can do the same thing for the other ones. You can see that everything is colored and I can go back and I should be able to play the clips smoothly still. The only stutter that I've found is when you add transitions. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Yeah, I was really surprised. Oops. By the performance. And same thing, you can put in 4K footage onto DaVinci Resolve and it will still be fine as long as you have a processor that is similar to this iPad Mini 5. And after calibrating everything, editing everything, do all your stuff, you can export the footage by tapping on the export. As I said before, because of the limitation of the processor, it's going to only export 1080p footage. The format that I usually export my videos into is the um, H.264 format, so I'm just going to leave it there. It's going to be a 1080p and I'm just going to leave everything in uh, the default setting and hit export and you'll be brought to the page where you are uh, be asked to where to save that footage and that's where you can export that footage into the uh, internal storage of your iPad and there you go that's it that's how you can use an old iPad with DaVinci Resolve or iPad to edit color grade and export your videos you can also sign in with your accounts to export the videos directly onto the uh, social media platform, but I don't usually do that. I want to make sure that I watch the video before I export it. So yeah, that's it. Thank you so much for watching. I almost forgot to mention the export speed of this. <laughs> it's really fast, probably because it's exporting or processing in 1080p and the export speed on a 2019 iPad mini 5 with DaVinci Resolve with all the footage, 10, uh, 1080p, 4K, in the timeline it's actually faster than the timeline if that makes sense so if it's a one minute footage or video it will take less than a minute to export which is really really fast so i'm just gonna quickly show you how it works i'm just gonna export this i'm just gonna go test one i'm gonna hit save and you can see that it's processing in a really high frame rate. It's faster than 24, so that's why you can tell that it's faster than the timeline. I did not do anything to, to, to shorten the clip. I should have, but anyway, you know what I mean by exporting speed, so it's great. That's it. Thank you so much for watching. Yes, I know this setup is kind of ridiculous by pushing the limits of the iPad mini 5 or any iPads with similar processing power, but it worked. And I think this is a really good budget setup for people who are starting and also who are considering just doing basic color grading or learning basic color grading and exporting videos and editing videos. So yeah, that's it. Let me know down in the comment section below if you have any questions or if you have any comments or if you have any experience that you want to share with us using such setup to make your videos or creating your projects.
Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.